What makes a vintage lens so special? What makes it remarkable? Is it the age? Is it the story behind the lens? What about the features? Most of us hear about the character of vintage lenses. What is the character? Is it the size of the aperture? Is it the number of aperture blades? Is it the design of the mount? Or the glass involved in its construction? Or is it something else? What if it's none of these things? The Indistar 50-2 50mm f3.5 lens is a compact and affordable lens that offers a unique shooting experience. It's not the most modern lens. It's not the sharpest lens either. The focus kind of falls off in the corners and it's prone to flares. But none of that is the point because that's not why you use a vintage lens. When you're shooting with a lens like this, you want to ask yourself only one question. How does it feel? Using a lens like this feels like I'm doing something right. It feels like I'm going back to the basics of photography and getting in touch with the reasons why I picked up a camera in the first place. Everything about this lens is minimal, from its build quality to its specifications. It's slow in comparison to my other primes. Most primes in my collection have at least a f1.4 aperture opening, or at the very least, a 2.8. But the end of star aperture is barely noticeable at a humbling 3.5 f-stop. In terms of image quality, this lens performs admirably. It produces a sharp and detailed images, particularly in the center of the frame. However, there's some softness and some loss of sharpness that can be observed toward the edges. The color rendition and the contrast are generally pleasing, uh, lending a vintage feel to the photographs. Depending on how I create the bokeh effect, you can see something of a swirl in the background, and it's really nice in the right, spe in the right settings. Handling the Indistar 52 is a delight, especially for photographers who enjoy manual focus. The lens has a smooth focusing ring, allowing for precision control over point of focus. The aperture control is also manual, providing a tactile experience. Its small size and lightweight construction make it portable and is a nice option for photographers on the go. Now, it's, it's important to note that the Indistar 52 is a fully manual lens, so it requires a compatible camera body with manual focus and aperture control. This limits the compatibility with certain modern camera systems that heavily rely on autofocus and electronic communication between lenses and cameras. But again, this is why you picked up a camera in the first place. This takes you back to the basics. I'm actually surprised at how few photographers and videographers even know how to use a manual lens. It takes a little bit of effort, especially when tracking faster options. You definitely gonna struggle with it if you're at a kid's birthday party, but you're just gonna struggle with it. It's not gonna ruin the shoot. It's not gonna ruin your pictures. And, and in fact, I've gotten some really pleasing image quality and video just walking with my kids. 
they move around a lot. It gives me something of a reason to keep moving the aperture, to keep moving the focusing ring, to try out different settings. And the more you play around with this lens, the more I think you're gonna love it. It's a tactile experience. It's manual, it's slow, it's methodical. It's cathartic. Now when it comes to low light performance, this lens might struggle a little bit. Um, it's got a narrow aperture, 3.5, and it makes it less suitable for situations that demand super fast shutter speeds and low lighting shooting. You're gonna wanna use this lens in the daytime. Again, out for walks in the park. I like to use this lens shooting nature, flowers, um, and not necessarily landscapes because it is a 50 millimeter, but if you're shooting scenes directly in front of you, um, it's going to capture a lot of that texture. It's going to give you a very natural, soft feel to your images that I think complements itself for nature photography. In conclusion, the Indostar 50 to 50 millimeter f3.5 is a lens that caters to those seeking a vintage aesthetic and manual shooting experience. Its image and quality and handling characteristics make it worthwhile option for photographers who enjoy the quirks of a unique characteristics of older lenses. When I pick up a, let's say my Canon 24 to 105 L series lens, most expensive lens in my collection. It's super sharp, it has image stabilization, it has all of these electronic advancements over all of my manual lenses. And that's fine. When you need a reliable lens, you need something that's going to do the work for you. That's what all of those fancy tools are for. So when I'm out with the family and I don't have time to mess around with the settings on my camera, or when I'm doing commercial work and I have to absolutely make sure I get it right the first time, every time, that's why you have a lens like this. When I'm gonna go out do some street photography, I usually grab a manual 28 millimeter or I grab my Indostar 52, believe it or not. A lot of my street photography is done with this lens because it's small, it's compact, it does everything that I need a lens to do, especially in the daytime, without being very noticeable. It's really good for street photography. I love the textures that, are, that you get with this this lens tends to show my images in the way that I actually see the world. When I shoot at sunset, at dusk, you get that blue haze. When I see shadows, the shadows are soft. The blacks are more like a dark gray. I, I don't see the world in a sharp contrasty perspective. I see rays of light. I see dirt on the windows. I see texture. I, there, there is a little vignetting on the edges because you, I shoot to draw your focus and attention toward the subject. Sometimes it's off to the thirds, sometimes it's the center focus, but it's what I intend for the viewer to look at when I produce an image. And that gives me everything I need for a lens. There's no distractions, there's no buttons and dials to get lost in. And I actually have some expensive lenses with dials that to this day I still don't know what they do. I don't have this problem with the Indostar. It's just screw it on, go start shooting. If you're gonna try shooting a birthday party, walk in a park, something casual, I say try this lens out. It's Not only is it easy to get and, and still fairly inexpensive for, for a manual lens, you should be able to get this lens for about 30 bucks. It's gonna kill you in shipping. Shipping is where you're gonna eat it. But once you get it in your hand, once you see how small and simple it is, there is nothing to think about, which lends a lot more bandwidth for you to focus on your photography, on your art, on creating a mood and a feeling. And I think when you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to enjoy the, the product that photography produces, which is images. You're gonna enjoy the images more because you're gonna, and it's gonna take you back to the feeling of what you were going through when you took that shoot, when you were walking past in nature, or when, when I'm doing street photography, or the laughter of the children. We say quirk, we say character, we say flaws. I say feeling. And the Indostar 52 is a lens that I love to use because of the feeling.